you've been thinking about the energy consumption issue around Bitcoin, when did you start to think this is a problem? Um, I mean, the I think the uh, energy consumption is best put in context because you know globally there's a lot of uh, zero emission power, and because the grid demands are uneven, grids are built to uh, cover the peak capacity, and so they have typically a lot in reserve, and so that tends to get unused. Um, so it's either unused capacity, or in some cases they have to pay people to shed excess capacity for uh, power projects that spin up and down. So that's that's what the Blockstream Energy announcement is about. And uh, together with Square, we're also building a zero emission uh, kind of pilot which is fully open source, open sourcing, you know, the financing, the profitability, which people usually keep as proprietary information to kind of prove the thesis that um, the uh, Bitcoin mining can actually improve the profitability and therefore help fund building and expanding the zero emission power grid uh, components in the world. So you may recall uh, much earlier in the year, there were some power cuts in Texas, and that's because it's uh, you know built to just in time. So, with additional grid uses like this, which can turn on and off uh, depending on pricing, you can improve the capacity so that you would have less risk of power cuts such as that. Uh, okay, so talk to us about how it works. You say you're leveraging the Blockstream satellite network to connect and operate these mining modules around the world. How, how exactly does this work and, and how will this be used? Uh, yeah, so the, the mining modules, uh, it's like a shipping container, uh, it's sort of in a shipping container format, but it's a mini data center with mining in it. Um, some people may know about the uh, Bloodstream satellite, which is a service for broadcasting Bitcoin data around the world. Uh, what's not as widely known and uh, you know we're seeing it here is that we have also bi-directional capability sufficient to power a, a mining location. And so we can operate these uh, basically anywhere in the world. Of course, you know, some of them are, uh, we're, we're basically buying power from the power producer. So they don't have to necessarily themselves uh, look to achieve a Bitcoin exposure by doing it. So they buy the equipment and then Blockstream buys the power from them. And so that can be intermittent power from you know, solar, wind, or power that's coming up and down based on grid demand, or very remote power, where there is uh, not much uh, local demand, sort of excess power. Now, you're joining forces with Square to build a solar-powered Bitcoin mining facility in the United States. What can you tell us about this plan? Uh, yeah, so the, the interesting thing there is to kind of fully open source the business model. So actually at Blockstream, we'd had the, you know, been analyzing mining and economics for, for, for quite a while. And so we've reached this thesis that mining can uh, sort of cross subsidize or improve the profitability of uh, zero emissions grid infrastructure. And so we saw a, an analysis report by ARC uh, co-authored with Square which reached the same thesis, so we uh, contacted them and got to talking. So we uh, decided between us to actually build, you know, a, a small-sized farm um, and demonstrate it with, you know, open-source dashboard, real-time data, and the financials getting into it. What do you think about Dorsey's plans? What do you think about his plans for the TB ne TBD network in particular? So this is the decentralized uh, Twitter. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of uh, decentralization. I think uh, that it's uh, preferable for kind of internet freedoms that social media companies don't kind of find themselves trapped in the editorial business, right? Meantime, you know, obviously so much has happened since Satoshi's original white paper, and I know you have a connection to that. If Satoshi were here, to j here today, what do you think he would think about the whole ecosystem, the community, the frenzy that's built up around his original idea? 
Well, I mean, it's, it's certainly a, you know, a very large scale system at this point. So you'd have to imagine that Satoshi would be quite impressed with uh, how far it came. Um, you know, certainly for participants who have been involved in Bitcoin, uh, you know, in earlier years, 2015, 2013 or before, um, it, it started as a much smaller community hobbyist kind of activity. And you know, so it's kind of the uh, perpetual September effect, which is about the internet and at any given time, the majority of the users are relatively new because it's growing so fast. And so Bitcoin has a lot of that. So there's a lot of enthusiasm and new users learning. I think it's easier and faster to catch up these days. So many more resources. Bitcoin versus Ethereum. Do you think Ethereum will surpass Bitcoin someday? Um, I think they're very different use cases. So the smart contracting platforms, there are, there are many computing platforms and Blockstream uh, has, has its own uh, version of that, which is we operate, uh, so we provide the technology and that's operated by a number of exchanges around the world. For the Liquid Network, a layer two for smart contracting and asset issuance. Um, and that has its own smart contract system called Simplicity, which is has formal provable security. So I think one of the things that's tended to let down the very real promise of smart contracts today is the very frequent and very large scale hacks of the systems. So you know, it's only just last week that there was a six hundred. So what do you think? Hack of so what do you think is coming next in crypto that we're not talking about yet? Um, I think the sort of focus on value, um, on solving real use cases, and um, less kind of tokenomics aspects. So, so the security tokens, it's always coming full circle. Uh, so security tokens being an actual registered security where the investor has investor rights. Uh, so with the Blockstream mining, as well as enterprise customers, we also offer a financial instrument called the Blockstream Mining Notes. And that is both a security registered in Luxembourg and a, a security token. So an asset you can transfer and sell on to another user or on an exchange in, in the short term on the liquid network, which is you know a layer two of Bitcoin. So being a layer two, there is no new coin involved. It's just using Bitcoin in a similar way that Lightning uses Bitcoin. 